Hello, in this video we're in the multiple linear regression setting and we're going to look at some more projection and item potent matrices stuff in multiple linear regression. And this is going to be important in later videos. So as a reminder, this is the population model that Y follows this equation with some error. Um, reminders from previous videos is that, oh, we're going to get a visit from my cat. Um, Ada, you got to move so I can do the video. So the hat matrix is H, which is X, X transpose, X inverse, X transpose. It's a perpendicular projection matrix onto the column space of X. So that means if we let Y be any vector in our in space, and then we pre-multiply it by the hat matrix, it projects it down into the column space of X. And that's pretty, pretty cool, pretty amazing. So HY is X, you know, and that's the least squares estimate of beta. Um, now, I minus H is a perpendicular projection matrix onto the orthogonal complement space of the column space of X. So that means if we let Y be any vector in our in space, then we pre-multiply it by this perpendicular projection matrix, I minus H, then it creates a, a vector that is perpendicular or orthogonal to the column space of X. And so I minus H times Y creates this, which we call the residual. Now, we want to show that the least squares estimate is actually the closest vector to Y of all the vectors in the column space of X. So um, the way we think about it is, is we have some Y that's in our in space floating out there, and then there's some sort of hyperplane, the column space of X, you know, that cuts through our in space, and we want to project Y down into or onto the column space of X, and it makes sense to take the shortest path, right, to, to represent what's, you know, in quotes, closest, the closest vector in the column space of X to Y. And that's what we're going to show here, that, that the least squares estimate, X beta hat, is actually the closest to the Y vector in the column space of X. So let's note that um, X beta hat is in the column space of X, right? So any vector, you know, you know, multiplied by X is in the column space. So let's let XA be another vector in the column space of X, where A is, of course, a member of R K plus one dimensions. So let's examine the squared length of, of Y minus X um, A. And this is the, the vector, the length between those two. And we want this as short as possible, or, or maybe we just want to investigate what this length looks like. Okay, so squared length is actually the dot product or this vector make multiplication. Now let's let's multiply or add zero to both of these vectors. So we're going to add and subtract x beta hat, add and subtract x beta hat. Now we're going to think about this in groups. We're going to group these two together and these two. The same over here. So then when we multiply this together, we have these two times this. Don't forget the transpose. We have these two times these two, which is this. Then we have this times the second and this second times the first. And since they're one by one matrices, we can take the transpose and we get the same thing. We, and so we take the transpose of one of those and that's why we get two of these, because we, we did that. And we write it like this just for convenience. Now, the, this dot product or the vector multiplication is actually squared length. Same way here, this is squared length. And here, um, we have Y minus H beta. But H beta was the hat matrix times Y. So if we write factor out of Y and then take the transpose, then we get this right here. And over here, we left take out an X, right? But notice that I minus H is the orthogonal, or it's a perpendicular projection matrix onto the orthogonal complement space of X. So if we pre-multiply 
x by this it is actually zero because there's no vector that can be in the column space of x and perpendicular to it. So that's zero. So now we have this distance. So y to xa, so it's any vector in the column space of x, is this. Now, remember, the only thing we're changing up is a to maybe find the smallest you know, vector in the column space of x to y. And so when we get to here, this is a squared length, so it's positive. This is a squared length, so it's positive. And the only thing we're changing up is A. So how do we make this as small as possible, meaning make this as small as possible, is, well, let's make this one zero, right? And then, that, then it can be as small as possible. We're not changing up the Y or the X beta hat. We're only changing up X or A. So to make this zero, you know, so meaning we want to minimize this. We we let x a be this x beta hat. So we let it so that that and so this is zero, and that says the least squares estimate is the that's the closest vector in the column space of x to y, and that's what this little proof shows. Now some more projection matrix stuff let's let j be one or you know capital one if that's a phrase so this is a vector n by one vector of ones so let's let j be this and it's a perpendicular projection matrix on the column space of one now note one is in the first column of the design matrix x right and has and and the rank of j is one where one is in a vector of one so let's prove that so note that the length of 1 is the square root of n. So if we divide by 1, you know, square root of n to, to 1, right, this is an orthonormal basis for the column space of 1. Now from P5, the property 5 from a video I have called perpendicular projection matrices, the orthonormal basis times the transpose of the orthonormal basis is a perpendicular projection matrix onto this column space, which is column space of one. So this is it. This is a perpendicular projection matrix. But wait, we said this was. So now let's show that this is actually equal to that. So J, which is this. Now one trans, you know, one dotted with one is N, and the inverse is one over N. And then we take N and, and split it into both of those. Right, and this is what we said was a perpendicular projection matrix. So note that J is idempotent, so J times J is J, and the rank of J. Now, since it's idempotent, it's actually equal to the trace, and the trait and J is this. So we can move this one to the end, and then we have this matrix times its inverse. So this is the identity, but these are one by one matrices. So it's the identity matrix of dimension one, which the trace is one. So that's what we wanted to prove. Now let's show that H minus J is a perpendicular projection matrix on the orthogonal complement space of one. And this, but it's with respect to X. And this the proof is by property seven of the perpendicular projection matrix video I had. And this, and this holds because the column space of 1 is a subset of the column space of x, right? The first column here is all 1, so clearly this is a subset of that. And j is a perpendicular projection matrix onto this. h is a perpendicular projection matrix onto this. So h minus j is a perpendicular projection matrix onto the orthogonal complement space of the column space of 1 with respect to x. So what this tells us is um, if we take any matrix, or not any, any vector in Rn space, so any vector that's floating out there and pre-multiply it by I minus J, what it does is it projects that down into the column space of X, but perpendicular to or orthogonal to the constant vector, the column space of 1. 
Now let's, and this is all going to be important when we do hypothesis testing. So let's show J Y. So Y is an n by one vector. Uh, yeah, I is an uh, n by one vector. So it's Y one, Y two, Y three. But remember, J is a perpendicular projection matrix onto the column space of one. So this, we know that it's going to take Y and shove it down onto a constant vector. We just know instantly from that. But now we want to know what's it equal to. And we're saying that it's equal to the, the mean of the y's. So every component of this vector is y bar, y bar, y bar. There's n of them. Uh, y is an n by 1 vector and y bar is a sample mean. So here's the proof. First we know that j projects onto the column space of 1, which means it's a constant vector. Instantly know that. So now if we look at J and expand it, which is this, now 1 transpose Y is actually the sum of the Y's. This is N inverse, which is 1 over N, right? But So this is a number, this is a number, and well, those combined is the sample mean, right? And that's the vector 1. But since that's a constant, we can, it doesn't matter, we can pre or post multiply. And so we get this, so that it is. So J, Y is a constant vector of this value. Now, th three more notes, and that um, H minus J, Y is this. So you multiply Y into both of those. Well, this is the fitted model, and that is a constant vector of Y bar. And this can be thought of as x beta hat. You know, this is a fitted model. <coughs> uh, H minus j times j is you multiply j in. So this is j, but and it's item potent. So this is j. So it's zero. Okay. And this is going to become important in showing the numerator and denominator are independent when we do hypothesis testing. So well, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.